Hello, and welcome to episode 192 of Dark and Stormy Book Club. Today, we are visiting spooky Baltimore. Enjoy. I'm Ann Dark. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together, we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club. A podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. We had an episode where we featured ghost hunters on our program who are located here in Maryland. And it got us thinking. Baltimore has been voted the most haunted city in the United States. So we figured it was time to bring some of these stories into the light from the darkness. The Amityville House, Penhurst Asylum, Eastern State Penitentiary. All of these locations are famous for housing paranormal activity that has frightened visitors of all ages. But there is one East Coast locale that stands out above the rest because of its history, hauntings, and overall beauty. The Westminster Burying Grounds in Baltimore. Westminster Hall in Baltimore is formerly known as Westminster Presbyterian Cemetery, and that burying ground was established back in 1786. Many well-known American Revolutionary War heroes and patriots from the War of 1812 are buried there, but the most famous gravesite is that of the macabre author Edgar Allan Poe. Many believe that Poe's spirit is not at rest and have reported seeing his ghost walking around his gravesite or even standing at the altar inside Westminster Hall. The reason is because the mystery that surrounds Poe's death. First of all, I want to say that I'm going to go into the mysterious death of Poe, and I got my information from the History Channel's website. Despite his macabre literary genius, Edgar Allan Poe's life was largely unhappy. After his young wife Virginia got tuberculosis in 1842 and died five years later, the already hard-drinking Poe apparently dove deeper into the bottle. In the late summer of 1849, he was in Richmond, Virginia, where he proposed to an old sweetheart, Elmira Shelton. On September 27, 1849, Poe left Richmond, supposedly bound for Philadelphia. The details of his actions and whereabouts over the next few days remain uncertain, but on October 3rd, a passerby noticed Poe slumped near an Irish pub in Baltimore. When Poe's friend, Dr. Joseph Snodgrass, arrived, he found the 40-year-old writer in what he assumed was a high drunken state, wearing cheap, ill-fitting clothes, very different from his usual attire. Taken to Washington College Hospital, Poe slipped in and out of consciousness. He died early on the morning of October 7th, reportedly uttering his last words, Lord help my poor soul. Poe's death left a mystery that lingered for more than a century. No death certificate seemed to have been filed, and a local newspaper reported Poe's cause of death of congestion of the brain, supposedly a euphemism for alcohol poisoning. Shortly after his death, Rufus Griswold, Poe's literary rival, wrote an obituary characterizing him as morally bankrupt, drunken womanizer. As Griswold wrote the first biography about Poe, 
His biased portrait formed the basis of Poe's image to the public, though later scholars concluded that Griswold's version of Poe's debauchery was highly exaggerated. So let's get into it. First of all, when they say Poe was wearing clothes that did not fit his attire, these clothes apparently did not fit him. A lot of people have ideas on what they think happened to Poe. Poe was found on Election Day right. in Baltimore. There was something called cooping where thugs were hired by rival politicians to threaten people to go into polling places to vote. And they would drug them, and then they would change their clothes and have them go into the same things. Kind of what people are being accused of today. Yeah. <laughs> That's a possibility. We think of him as very famous person. Back then, these thugs probably didn't read much, so they might have not known who Poe was. Then, apparently, they buried him in an unmarked grave, and he was moved three years later. When they moved him, the body was in a severe decomposition, and they heard something rolling around in the skull. So what some people think is that once the brain deteriorated, that that was actually a tumor, and that would have definitely given him a lot of the symptoms that he was showing when he died. Also, when he was found, kept uttering the name Reynolds, and they never did figure out what Reynolds meant, but he said it over and over again. People also say that Poe never truly got over Virginia's death, even though she was his cousin and a lot younger than he was, but, you know, given the time, I guess it was okay. <laughs> But if you'd like to learn more about Poe's death, you can read the book The Midnight Dreary by John Evangelist Walsh. And then another book that I highly recommend, it really doesn't have anything to do with his death, but it's one of my favorite books, is The Poe's Shadow by Matthew Pearl. That highly. is an excellent yes. book. Well, Poe might be the most famous ghost at Westminster Hall, but there are many others. There is the Skull of Cambridge. Oh, I've heard of that. It is said to be the decapitated head of an unknown murdered minister. Reports claim the skull would scream at all hours of the day or night, and those screams were said to be so terrible they would linger in the minds of those who spent time around it until it drove them to the point of insanity. Another famous ghost frequently spotted is that of Lydia Taylor who passed away in 1816 at the age of 16. Her spirit often appears as a misty figure dressed in white kneeling at prayer by her own grave. In centuries past the catacombs of Westminster were said to be the most haunted space on the grounds. The catacombs were victims of grave robbing. While many of those robberies consisted of jewelry and artifacts of the dead, Davidge Hall, also known as the College of Medicine of Maryland, was located near the cemetery. Those grave robberies occurred during the era when medical students began dissecting corpses and cemeteries were often robbed of freshly dead bodies. It is rumored that during this time two medical students at Davidge Hall were caught in the act of removing bodies to take back to the dissecting lab. When they were caught, a commotion was raised to the point that it created a mob, and one of the students was hanged from a nearby street light. His ghost is said to now wander through the grounds as well. Additionally, it is believed that many of those who were buried at Westminster Hall were not actually dead when they were buried. The church graveyard remained active from 1852 until 1997. After World War I, the neighborhood changed, and the Presbyterians who originally worshipped there chose to move their services elsewhere. 
At this point, children in the neighborhood began using the graveyard as a playground. One minister reported children running around with unearthed skulls on the ends of broomsticks, thus stirring up even more ghostly apparitions. In 1974, Westminster was placed on the National Register of Historical Sites. It was frequented by such famous figures as Vincent Price, John Aston, and Walt Whitman. That is, in a nutshell, the story of Westminster Hall and its ghosts. And I received my information from a book called Abandoned Baltimore. And it has a lot of stories about places in Baltimore that are no longer active. I visited Westminster. We used to walk there at lunchtime and put pennies on Poe's grave, which is what the children in Baltimore did to raise money. And my son came with me one day, and he was poking his head down in open graves because there's quite a few of those, and saw a skeleton. He was thrilled. So that is our first dive into haunted or spooky Baltimore. If you know of a place in Baltimore you'd like to hear about, let us know. But if you don't, we've got plenty of we've material. We've got lots of material Baltimore's to work a creepy from. place. It sure <laughs> is. In our show notes, we will put a list of some of the books that you can find information about Spooky Baltimore. Be sure and listen to our episode about the ghost hunters, the mob town paranormal. That was episode 187. You can hear their take on some of the places that they had investigated. Trivia. Last week's question was, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle could fit right in today's medical practices due to his staunch advocacy for what? A. Sanitation. B. Social distancing. C. Compulsory vaccinations. Or D. Birth control. The answer is C. Compulsory vaccinations. He wrote volumes denouncing the anti-vaxxers of his day. This week's question, which mystery author's fame increased when President Bill Clinton listed him as one of his favorite authors? A. Walter Mosley, B. John Grisham, C. Dan Brown, or D. Clive Cussler. Good luck! Before we go, we had a request from one of our favorite people, the Bow Street Society. They interviewed us several months ago. They just put out an ad for their podcast. We will play that advertisement for you now. Hello, I'm crime fiction author T.G. Campbell. And I'm Richard A. Boxall. And this is the Bow Street Society podcast featuring interviews. I'm Vicky Pipe from Bow Street Police Museum. The ladies from the Dark and Stormy Book Club podcast. I am Anne Dark. And I am Tracy Stormy. Chats with characters from the books. I am Miss Rebecca Trent. I'm Dr. Percy Weeks. Hello, I am Mr. Percival Locke. And much more. But first, we are going to take a look into the Holborn Herald with a news roundup of anything worth knowing for fans of the books and the era that they come from. That's what I like about your characters, Tani, is that they do feel, they feel like real people in those yeah. times. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why I enjoy the book series so much. So please do subscribe using whatever device you use. The simplest way, if you have a smartphone, is to subscribe using either the Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts apps, both of which are available for free, although we are available on multiple platforms, including Spotify and TuneIn Radio. You can find out more about the podcast and books at www.bowsociety.com. So, that brings us to the end of another program. Glad you listened. Please join us next week. And remember, life would be boring without a little spookiness. Bye. Bye.